Sports Central presents Max Prep SoCal. And welcome into Max Prep SoCal. The playoffs are finally here. Over the next half hour, we're going to look at the brackets and highlight some of the biggest games of the first round. I'm Chris Harry. Very pleased to be joined by former LA Charger in Riverview, Florida, high alum Jaleel Ladai. Jaleel, we got games up and down. Each bracket going to be a fun playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs? We're talking playoffs? <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait to see it. It's playoff time. It's a whole new season, and we'll be excited to dive in today. Yep, let's do it now. Let's look at the final Max Preps National High School football rankings before the playoffs. No change in the top five, which includes St. John Bosco and Modern Day, but a big upset in Texas saw DeSoto High beat Duncanville, jumping six spots to seventh. Two more California teams are nationally ranked in the top 25, number 20 Centennial and number 22 Sierra Canyon. Here in the southern section, St. John Bosco, the number one seed in the Division I playoffs after claiming outright the Trinity League title. Last Friday, they beat Orange Lutheran 44-22. Quarterback Caleb Sanchez threw a career-high six touchdown passes in the win. The Braves have a bye this week before the D1 playoffs begin next week. They're going to face San Clemente in the opening round of the 18 playoff bracket. The other first round matchups, number two seed Modern Day against Jay Sarah, three seed Sierra Canyon against Santa Margarita, and fourth seeded Corona Centennial against Orange Lutheran. Jaleel, when you look at this bracket, what do you see? I see Modern Day, I see St. John Bosco, as everybody does. It's hard to disagree that these guys are the head honchos of this bracket. But if there's one team that I think that could take over the rings and knock one of these guys off, it'd have to be Sierra Canyon. Wyatt Becker, 6'4", 200 pounds, stud. He has every offer in the country. He's slinging the ball all around the field. I think he'd be the guy in the team to do it to one of those guys. Hey, you know what? Sierra Canyon's nationally ranked. Uh, the head coach of this football program, nationally ranked too, Corona Centennial. Now joining us is the head coach, Matt Logan. And coach, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, let's get your thoughts on the bracket when you first saw it. Um, as most coaches probably in this division, we're disappointed that we have a bye the first round. We'd much rather be playing a game and getting ready, but uh, we're excited. We know it's probably the toughest bracket in the country, and uh, we're excited to get it going next week. Hey, Coach, when I look at this roster, you got some studs on your team. I want to talk about Cornell Hatcher running back. He's averaging 8.9 yards a carry. What does he mean to your offense and not only your offense? What does he mean to your team going into the playoffs? Yeah, to our team, he's one of our leaders. He's such a hard worker on and off the field, and he's you know a 4.0 student. He's one of our strongest guys we've ever had here at Centennial, not just on the team, and he's a tremendously hard worker. He's our leader. He's, he plays incredibly hard, and you can just always get 100% effort out of Cornell. He's awesome. Coach, you know, when we talk about this bracket and when we talk about a lot of teams on the program, it, it mainly starts with Bosco in modern day. Uh, how do your guys react to that? Because you guys are nationally ranked yourself. You know, what's the motivation going into these playoffs for your ball club? You know, I, I know it's cliche, but you got to take it one week at a time. I mean, obviously the road goes through one of them eventually, and then, then, and then, the, then you get the other one the next week. So, that, that you know, we got to get there first. So we got to worry about Orange Lutheran, and then we'll, you know, worry about playing Bosco in modern day. Yes, yeah, speaking of those two teams, let's talk about your team, the stud that you have at quarterback, Kusan Longstreet. Four star, six foot, 185. First year in your system, for someone to come into a system first year and have the type of success that he's had, what can you say about this young man? Yeah, he loves to play the game, incredible athlete, very talented. You know, and it was even to the, to the success he has had, he was out six weeks um, prior to, to camp, uh, fall camp with a, with a finger injury. So he didn't throw all summer and, and part of spring. So it's been really nice to see his development come, come a long ways in this short amount of time. We know you're going to have you guys ready, Coach. We appreciate your time and uh, wish you the best of luck. No problem. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Jalil, let's turn our attention to the Division II playoffs now. We're top-seeded Rancho Cucamongo, 9-1 after the regular season. They're the top seed. The Cougars ran the table in the regular season before last week's 17-14 loss to Upland, which gave the league title to the Highlanders and possibly cost them a spot in the Division I bracket. Up next for Rancho Cucamonga, they're going to face Huntington Beach's Edison High Friday in Rancho in the first round of the Division II playoffs. 
we're definitely glad that we were able to acquire that, that top spot, but we know that you know there's a lot of hard work in front of us, a lot of great teams, a lot of great coaches, and so we're going to get battle tested every week starting this week with, with Edison. But, you know, it's an honor for us to have that top spot, and, um, you know, we got to earn it every single day at practice and as we go through uh, each round of the playoffs. So a great season for these guys, but, you know, we mentioned it, that loss potentially may have cost them the Division I playoff bracket. Yeah, it may have, but guess what? You have to look forward. You can't look at what happened in the past and dwell on it. You have to say, hey, we're a good team. We were 9-0. and Did we lose? Yes, we did lose. But we have to use that as motivation and continue to stack and stack and have a good week of practice going into the playoffs. All right, so what about the rest of this bracket, Jalou? Who's going to pose the biggest challenge, you think, to top seeded Rancho? I'm looking at Oaks Christian. They got studs at the receiver and quarterback position. Nate Bennett, Baylor commit. Chase Farrell, Stanford commit. Both three stars. Just a couple weeks ago, Chase Farrell went crazy. Seven catches, 254 yards and three touchdowns. They're explosive and they're dangerous. I'm just looking at this bracket, man. It is absolutely loaded. You got Long Beach Poly at two. You got Valencia, Servite, Upland, the team that beat Rancho. I mean, it's really anybody's bracket. It's really anybody's bracket. It's loaded. Loaded potato, there's cheese, there's chives, there's sour cream, there's butter. <laughs> there's everything right here in this bracket. It's going to be exciting to watch. Hey, you heard it here. The Division II bracket, just like a loaded potato, right? Coming up next, we're going to check in uh, with the Valencia Vikings, who joined Sports Central last weekend ahead of being picked in the Division II bracket. Plus, our Game of the Week preview, unbeaten Chino taking on Long Beach Jordan in the Division Seven playoffs. Now, here's a look at some more playoff brackets. Welcome back, everybody. The Valencia Vikings finish off a 6-0 record in league play last week, beating Canyon 38-0 to claim the Foothill League title. They were picked to play in the Division II playoffs. We'll take on Servite in the first round. Head coach Larry Neer and senior quarterback Jackson Askins join Darren Haynes on Sports Central following their win over Canyon. Weight room, weight room, weight room. Okay, uh, noted. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to be as well conditioned as you can be, and and uh, disciplined, and 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 put the work in to uh, get what you you know you get end up getting what you deserve. So you uh, put the work in, and these guys that did this this year, and and uh, they uh, b uh, bought into each other, and uh, they uh, that was just an awesome journey for them. That's the biggest thing as a team is if everyone has the same goal and same mindset every day that we can do big things. Now you talk about your your motto. They told us during the break, it's one unit, right? All right. So so coach, and, and, I mean, I, this is for both of you guys. You get that one unit now. You guys got the title. Sure. Now you have the postseason. What's the mindset now for you guys moving as one unit moving forward? Go one and zero each week. You know, okay. show up on Monday, get into work, and ready to ready to work every day. That entails some some weight some weightlifting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A little oh, bit yeah. of weightlifting oh, yeah. in there too. Yeah, definitely some uh, they, and they do the work. They do do the work. Weight room, weight room, weight room. Yeah, that's all I heard. Weight room, weight room, weight room, and they do the work. This coach is priding himself on the trenches, on his team being physical, on his team bringing and packing the punch to the other opposing team and not waiting and sitting back and allowing them to deliver the blow. All right, our game of the week comes from the Division 7 playoffs in the southern section, 10-0 in top seed Chino against Long Beach Jordan out of the Tough Moore League. Now, the Cowboys claim their second Sierra League title in the last four years with a 42-21 win over Pomona High last week, while the Panthers ended with a loss to Long Beach Poly but finished 7-3 against a pretty tough schedule. We caught up with both head coaches before the big game. Long Beach Jordan, very good football team. Uh, 
ton of athletes, uh, a lot of big, big football players and stuff. And just know they're very battle tested. They come from the Moore League, so they play teams like Long Beach Poly, Long Beach Milliken. Um, so no, like I said, they've seen some good athletes. They've seen some big, big, strong football players. So like I said, um, they're going to come in here and be pretty battle tested. I look at rankings like this. Other people, that's other people's opinion of your team. So if that's what they think, and we got to go play a football game. So I'm excited for it. This is the second season, so it's an all-new game. It's a it's a four it's a four game race. So again, it's game week to week, and I like our chances. All right, so both of these teams feature athletes at quarterback. And we'll start with the Panthers. Uh, Jarrett Nielsen, the coach's son, Jaleel. He's a beast. He's a coach's son. You, so you know he's brought up the correct way. He's fundamentally sound. He takes what the defense gives him. And when the splash plays are there, he airs it out. Uh, you know, DeChino, uh, Diego got it. We were looking at his stats in, in our prep meeting. They're ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Once again, he's lighting it up. He's lighting up the scoreboard. He's going crazy. He's averaging nine yards a carry. They're going to need to lean on him in that rushing attack to keep Jarrett Nielsen in that high-powered offense and that battle-tested Jordan team off the field. When you have two athletes at the quarterback position going head-to-head, -head, what's the biggest thing that one of these guys is going to have to do to win the game? Like I said, one of them have to control the clock. I think the biggest thing, they have to have a lot of time of possession. You want to keep that star-studded quarterback on the sideline, limit his, his possessions, limit yeah. his chances of getting that ball down the field and making plays for his team. All right, here's a look at the full D7 bracket. Agora High is also featured in the top half, while the four seed is Diamond Ranch taking on Pasadena Mirror on Friday. In the bottom half, 9-1 Laguna Beach is the two seed, led by Washington Commit and Danny Hernandez pupil quarterback Jackson Collins. Coming up next, we'll give the city section a little love and check in with the top seed in the Division I playoffs, the Manning Pilots, Plus, Zach Poff and Steve Montoya going to join us to break down the playoffs next and give you some players to watch. But first, we got more brackets. Max Prep SoCal. Well, we're out in Wilmington this week to catch up with the Pilots ahead of their first round game this week against the Santee High Falcons, who finished with a 7 and 3 record and second in the Exposition League. Banning High has won 12 city section championships, but are looking for their first in over 20 years this season. We start our goals from January, and it's championship mindset. Um, we come from a tradition of championships here at Banning, and unfortunately, we, we, we were godfathered into this and grandfathered into this, and so uh, we carry the tradition of the Banning High School football program, and that's always the mindset, championship mindset. So at this point, we're, we're the one seed, and the mindset is still the same, championship mindset. All right, so here's a look at the rest of the Division I teams in the top half of the bracket with Banning, including Coliseum League champs Dorsey High. In the bottom half, Fayton to Crenshaw is the three seed, while Franklin is the two seed after going 5-0 in the Northern League. Meanwhile, the A-team Open Division playoffs kick off next week. Three-time Division Open Division champs Birmingham enter as the top seed. 9-1 Garfield Bulldogs are the two seed. And now it's time for our weekly chat with Max Preps National Football Editor Zach Poff. And joining him this week, Steve Montoya. And Steve, I want to start with you before we talk uh, about the Southern section. The L.A. City section Open Division playoffs also begin next week. Can anybody knock off Birmingham? Man, it'd be uh, <laughs> extremely hard to bet against them. Three-time defending champs and they're rolling. Last week, I mean, they... They won 83 to six, and they're scoring over 44 points a game. 
it it's tough to say that they're gonna they're gonna fall. I actually think the Carson Colts are the the sleeper pick in the bracket. Obviously Garfield's very good, but I just really think it's gonna be tough to beat Birmingham. I, I like their quarterback, Kingston Tisdale. Uh, he's a three-star. He can play. Their their running back, Ronald Hewitt, sophomore. He scored a lot of touchdowns this season. So if you're gonna win a championship, obviously it's gonna have to go through Birmingham. See, when you say 83 to 6, that's almost all you need to know, right? <laughs> Zach, but what about <laughs> the right. D1 bracket in the southern section? This thing is absolutely loaded. Yeah, uh, this is this is the best playoff bracket, obviously, in California, but the entire country. I mean, you just look at the bracket, you have four nationally ranked teams. St. John Bosco, the number three team in the country. If they run the table through this bracket and get impressive wins, there's a chance they could still finish the season at number one. But I think modern Dave's going to be a tough out. Then you obviously got Sierra Canyon and, you know, you had coach Logan on earlier. Corona Centennial is a team that's playing great football right now. He touched on Hassan Longstreet. This is a guy who's been getting better every single week. So don't count the Huskies out either. But I would expect Bosco and modern day to rematch Thanksgiving weekend. Each of you guys have two players to watch for these playoffs. Zach, I'll start with you. Who are you two? Who are your two guys rather? Yeah, looking at that D2 bracket, as Jaleel said earlier, man, this is a loaded potato bracket. There's a bunch of guys to pick from. It was hard to pick, too. But, you know, I got Los Al's, Davon Mitchell. This is a four-star Oklahoma committed tight end. He was the number one rated tight end in the class of 2025. And then he ended up reclassifying to 2024. But he's a big-time playmaker for Los Al. And if Los Alamitos wants to get all the way to the D2 championship game, they're going to have to get number four of the ball a lot. And another guy, too, is Darius Curry. Curry. This is one of the most underrated quarterbacks on the West Coast. He's a 2024 Colorado, Colorado State commit for Long Beach Poly. He's thrown for 2,600-plus yards, has 36 touchdowns. And I actually think Long Beach Poly should have been in that D1 bracket. I think they're one of the top eight teams in the CIF Southern section. And Long Beach Poly is my pick to win the D2 bracket. And a lot of it has to do with Darius Curry at quarterback. All right, Steve, uh, who are your two guys? A, a lot to choose from, needless to say. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like impossible to pick some guys to, to watch. But I, I, I looked at the Max Prep stat leaderboards and I, I kind of went some players that are putting up some big numbers. And I started watching film on Dylan Wright, uh, Riley out of Rancho Verde. He's a three-star Boise State commit, a running back. He's a He's also a track guy. He's super fast and explosive. And when he gets the ball in his hands, he's extremely tough to bring down. As you watch on, on the tape right here, is, this is one of uh, just an example of what he can do on the field. They're in Division Six. Uh, he's rushed th uh, three times this season, uh, where he, he's had 200 or more yards. So I like I like him. I like what he does on on tape. Good good all around player for sure. And then this I mean this one's a kind of an easy pick I guess you could say. But Brady Smigel and, and Shane Rosenthal and, and what they do at Newberry Park uh, in Division Five. Uh, obviously Brady Smigel is one of the best top young quarterbacks in the country. And when he throws the ball to Shane Rosenthal, it's it's pretty much impossible to stop them. Uh, I mean, Brady's thrown for over 3,000 yards, 42 touchdowns this season. It's incredible. Uh, and, you know, and his twin brother's not too bad either. He has eight touchdowns on the season. So uh, those are two teams to watch in the Division Five and uh, Division Six playoffs in, in the Southern section. Well, Steve, you cheated a little bit, but you can't talk about Rosenthal without Smigel. So I'll let that one go, right? <laughs> hey, before, before you guys go, uh, can you talk about how you decide on a national champion? It, it really comes down to strength of schedule and how you win in those big time games. And you look at St. John Bosco, you know, they had that loss against Kahuku, but they kind of made up for it with that 28 nothing win against modern day. So if they can stack wins in the CIF section, Southern section division one playoff bracket, that's going to bode well for them because Bishop Gorman, they're not going to face that tough competition in the Nevada 5A playoffs. And same thing with Shamanad Madonna, who's at number two in the 1M playoff bracket. They're just not going to play the best teams in Florida. So St. John Bosco, they're going to have a chance to stack more quality wins, especially in the playoffs. So that's really the deciding factor is how you play in those big time games and especially how you look in the playoffs when you're playing the best competition in the country. Gentlemen, love the insight that you bring us each and every week. Enjoy the playoffs and buckle up. Still to come, it's one of the longest running rivalry games in the country. We'll look back on the 88th East LA Classic next, but first, the final three playoff divisions in the Southern section.
watching Max Prep SoCal. 88th edition of the East LA Classic last Friday, Garfield against Roosevelt. Garfield on their opening drive, quarterback Damian Cabrera hits Isaac Naranjo in the fight for the score. Bulldogs up 7-0. Garfield has been hot, averaging 50 points per game this season. Second quarter, Cabrera again, this time to Jaden Barnes. Garfield rolls 49-16. The Bulldogs have won nine straight after dropping their season opener. Uh, so Jaden Barnes, who you saw, he's the younger brother of Dante, who used to be a production assistant here. So I wanted to give Jaden a little love because he was no balling doubt. out, man. We're going to give him a special shout out. He's a two sports star, Jaleel. Beast, beast, man. You love to see it. You love to see a two sports, two sports star in high school doing it all on both sides. Whatever he chooses, he does well. Yeah, he set the school record 12 receiving touchdowns this past season. So. Shout out to Jaden. Uh, all right, one final look at the Division I playoff bracket in the Southern section. These games begin next Friday, and the championship game is set for Friday, November 24th at the LA Coliseum. That's going to do it for this episode of Max Prep SoCal. For Jaleel, I'm Chris. Enjoy the playoffs.